Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at smashing some block text into the ground and shattering it into a bunch of pieces. Uh, this would be a useful technique for doing an intro or an outro, um, or if you just want to learn a bit about smashing some stuff and having some control over what happens and when, then this would be good for you. Um, so first things first, we need to get rid of the uh, default cube and add in a text object and I'll just type in the word blender with caps lock on and we can just smash this into the ground um, now the text objects are not very good uh, for actual doing any uh, smashing with because um, the way we're going to generate the chunks it's, it doesn't play very well with that um, so the best thing to do is basically just trace over this uh, with a plain object and just extrude and stuff over that um, in order to do that easily, we're going to do Alt-C and convert to a mesh. And we'll turn on uh, vertex snapping here. And I'll just turn on that. Then I'm going to go Shift-A, add in a plane. And go into the top view. Turn off uh, perspective view. And then uh, just tab, in, uh, tab into edit mode and um, go Z for wireframe and I'll just move this across and with uh, vertex snapping you can get the exact shape um, of what you're trying to make as soon as you put uh, your cursor over the vertex and then you just got to trace around uh, what's going on um, I'll just do the B on the screen um, so I'm just snapping these here <coughs> sorry and I was just using Control R to create an edge loop and then this bit uh, is going to be a little bit tricky because this needs to come out so I'll do a loop cut in here and then extrude, bring that out to there bring this one down and this one up and then I'll just go down the bottom and start moving this across um, I can bring so I'll bring this one down to the bottom, uh, down to about there, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's actually easier if you go to them why when you don't want the snapping. Um, or you can turn this magnet off and just hold control whenever you're moving. As I let go of control you can see it's um, no longer snapping. Um, so I'm going to add in another edge loop here, bring that down to there. Snap that in there, extrude this across to about there, and then I'm just going to create a face here, add in a few loops, and I'll turn this snapping back on, and just sort of get these fairly evenly spread out, and then just add in a loop. Uh, between each one to continue smoothing and you can do that as many times as you want for as much detail as you want um, obviously the the mesh that's uh, generated from the text object um, is limited in how much uh, detail there is but there's enough to do some stuff with and the top's pretty much uh, exactly the same as the bottom Bring that up to there, extrude this out, create that face, put in a few loop cuts, and so we've got the basics of the B there, and um, we can get it looking pretty convincing as to uh, what there was. Um, for the L, E and N, um, what's actually easiest to do is go into this object and box select them and even box select this other E as well and then go P separate by selection select the B that we just done shift select this and go control J now these objects they're very simple uh, they're very square um, so you don't need to worry about um, modeling them really, I can do control J and that should get rid of some triangles even alt J, there we go, alt J got rid of 
quite a few triangles so you can see there's uh, this object here is now fine um, what we do want to do is add in some edge loops top and bottom uh, just for some extra detail for when it comes to um, doing uh, the shattering and the simulations and stuff um, and then the E you'd basically just want to select these uh, we'll select so we'll go into edge mode select these three edges and get rid of those edges then go back to vertex mode do, you can do a loop cut uh, on an edge that doesn't have any polygons and you just can't see where it's cutting so I just scrolled up once and then uh, left clicked and I got two vertices in there so now I've got an E that's all quads and then I'll probably add in some extra uh, loops here as well and then continue on um, and trace around the D and the R as before uh, with the B um, so I'll just go into another file that I've already done all this in uh, this is my blender text object um, you can see I've modeled all the uh, detail and all the shapes of the the letters and I've got plenty of loops in there so I've got plenty of stuff to work with um, now I'm gonna select all of that and just extrude it out so we've got some block text um, if you want to uh, add a bevel in you can um, just alt right click on here uh, you want to do it in edge mode so alt right click and then you can do control B and bevel around an entire shape um, I'm not going to worry about that because it will add in some extra time it takes to do things uh, whilst I'm doing the tutorial so I won't worry about that now what I will do is just uh, W and subdivide with everything selected do that twice so there's plenty of geometry to work with and then in order to um, shatter the object uh, sorry first thing we want to do actually is uh, set this up so that it's animated to fall down so I'm just gonna select the camera oh, R, Alt, G, R, X and 90 and bring it back and up a bit and then G and double tap Z to bring it back a bit more so the whole of the blend, blender text is gonna fit within that so I'm gonna go R, X, uh, R, X and 90 so we've got uh, the blender text sitting on the ground. I'm just going to rotate it a bit. Not too much. I mean you can have it rotated down that much but uh, I don't feel the need to. So then I'll move it up above the camera and go make sure I'm on frame 1. Go I and then lock rot. Um, I've just realized I don't have my screencast keys on so I'll turn those on. Um, and then I'll move this down and bump up to frame 24 because I'm currently at frame uh, 24 frames per second so having it um, for about one second for the drop to happen is fine um, so I'll just do an eye lock rot and then I'll go into front view and just make sure that this isn't going uh, past the bottom of the world um, and I might even just move this up a little bit so it's got a little bit of space to fall when it comes to shattering um, so now uh, what we actually want to happen the frame after this uh, we want to move this out of view and then we'll bring in the shattered object um, so I'll just move that down here and go I lock rot so as soon as um, it gets down to this point it'll disappear and we'll bring in the other one so in order to shatter this, uh, we need to go control u to bring up user preferences and just type in cell here and you've got cell fracture. Turn that on. It's a good little add-on that um, does shattering on objects. So we'll open up cell fracture. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. Um, probably one of the nicest things you can do is use grease pencil to determine how it shatters, but we're not going to worry about that in this tutorial. Um, I'll leave that at 100 uh, 
the source limit is basically how many chunks you'll get um, and then you can add in some other things and you can add um, so this setting here lets you add the material indice of 1 or 0 or whatever to be uh, what's actually between the shattered areas uh, which is quite nice if you want to have sort of say a metallic exterior and a wooden interior or something then you could definitely have that um, but I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to hit OK and you can see it's doing some stuff in the background um, it's just running the algorithm that it has uh, to shatter the object um, obviously if you turn up these settings quite high you'll get a lot of detail in the actual shatter but um, it will take quite a while to generate that now if you come back in and you'll notice um, that this is just the normal object because uh, what the add-on does by default is it sends the uh, shattered objects into layer 2 so uh, we've got that and we've got a bunch of objects that are shattered into different pieces so now we can um, add in some rigid body simulation in order to get that all to shatter on the ground um, so I'll just set my cursor to the center add in a plane for that dual shatter onto um, now we're going to use the game engine um, bullet physics rigid body simulation we're not going to use this one because um, it's difficult I don't think you can get keyframes out of this it just sort of plays through as you render and stuff so um, and I want to control when things start and when things finish um, so what we can do is uh, first thing we want to do is actually set it so that this object is below the ground or below everything um, sorry we need to undo that so we'll go to the frame where we want it to appear and go I lock rot and then go back one frame and then bring it down and go I lock rot so we can even uh, move this into layer 1 now and we need to move the plane into layer 1 as well so we've got uh, this will come down and then it will turn into you can see it turns into the shattered version of itself uh, you can see there's a frame there where it just changes um, so that's working fine now we will select all of the pieces um, and we'll go into Blender game and I think doo -doo -doo, that should be fine uh, we'll turn on collision bounds at 0 0.01 um, that just tends to keep everything happy um, and that should be fine so we'll go uh, we'll hit P to simulate and you'll see some of the pieces fall through the bottom um, if you turn up the margin a bit more and if you turn this to a convex hull um, you'll see less of that happening maybe turn up the margin to 0 0.05 and P to simulate and so there's only a few very small pieces falling through now um, so that looks good uh, what I do want is for the actual smashing uh, to start off in slow motion to do that um, the easiest thing, way to do it is set the gravity to point, uh, 0 0.098 so it's one tenth of normal, gra normal gravity um, and it will make everything go slower so if I go P and you'll see everything slowly smashes into the ground um, so I'm pretty happy with where that is at the moment um, so I'm going to go to game and here and hit record animation and then hit P one more time and basically the longer that you leave this the more frames um, it's going to generate for everything um, so we'll leave it going for a little bit probably about there's good enough so I'll hit escape and then we can go back into blender render and you'll see all these keyframes have been generated uh, which is great so now if we go into the camera view and hit Alt A it'll come down and slow motion uh, do some smashing which is great 
Um, obviously that was a bit of a it a bit sort of went really quick and then just stopped and started going slow motion smashing. So we really need to ease that the motion of that text down. The easiest way to do that is to go into the graph editor. And I'll just turn off the tool panel there. Oh. Uh, so we can still see what's going on and then we'll go to the graph editor and we're just gonna we only need to look at the Z location so if it the home key it will zoom me in to what's selected and I want to have this graph looking something like this where it's easing in um, but not too much Maybe something like that. Uh, we hit Alt A. You can see how that goes. And just keep, um, you can keep massaging this around and sort of get it so that it, as you can see there, it sort of slows in and then hits and starts going. Um, that's probably good enough just for now, for the sake of this tutorial. Um, but you can, um, if if you want to put some more frames ahead of that, that's fine. You can do that your way. Um, I'll just bring this back out. And what I actually want to happen is for it to go, to come down, ease in, smash in slow motion for a few seconds, and then go back into normal time. Now to do that, uh, we'll go into the front view. And we'll select all of these objects, and we'll unselect that. I don't think the ground's selected. I'm just middle clicking to unselect objects. Um, and so I want it to sort of from about here to go back into normal time. So I'll bring up a window here that is the dope sheet, and the dope sheet summary lets you select everything. Um, so if we hit A to unselect everything. So you can see these have gone white now, so everything's unselected. And then I'm just going to box select up to about where the green time slider is. And then just zoom in a bit. And then all I need to do is box select here. And then I'm going to hit X and delete keyframes. And I'll stay in on this frame. Uh, we're going to go back into Blender Game. And we'll set gravity to uh, 9.8 meters per second. Um, and physics all should be fine. So if we go game and record animation still on. So if we just hit P and then that will all collapse in at normal speed. Um, you can probably do this process several times if you want to ease in and ease out a bit more. Um, but I'm just sort of showing you the technique that I've come up with to get this effect. And I'll just get rid of the dope sheet. Unselect everything. And that there pretty much is the sort of final effect. Um, the easing for that last bit um, when the text comes down still needs a bit more work. It probably needs to start coming a bit slower when it's about halfway. And then really get slow and then hit down him. I think we were doing um, 20 times slower than normal. And then coming back into normal there. And it's a good little effect. Um, you can do lots of fun stuff with that. Uh, it's not too complicated, so hopefully you've uh, picked up a few things from there. Um, if you found that you learned some stuff from this, uh, please like favorite and subscribe um, and I've got links to my Facebook and Twitter in the bottom so you can uh, keep up and sort of get some uh, head notice of when videos are coming and stuff um, so until next tutorial uh, have fun <laughs>